Hello tiny friends, welcome back. I'm Jolene and today I'll be creating more lights for the Josephine house. In my last video, I created this bare bulb light fixture and I asked for help because I just couldn't decide where to place it. A uh, majority ruled the ceiling, so that's where it's gonna go. I have this battery operated light and I'm gonna use the fluted top for inspiration to create a couple more fixtures for the hallway. I wanna thank everyone for voting in the comments to help me find a permanent placement for this light. But one of the first comments that I read by one fine piece of glass suggested that I created a set of gas light type fixtures. And I absolutely loved that idea. I fell in love with that idea so much that I decided to go with it. So thank you so much, One Fine Piece of Glass, for suggesting this idea that I absolutely adored. And today I'll be creating a set of gaslight type fixtures for the hallway. I thought it was perfect for the farmhouse. I thought it was perfect for those days. So I researched what they look like and came up with some inspiration to create my own that was fitting for the Josephine house. I'm gonna use this bag that I received with my Valentine bouquet and uh, the handles are made of air hoses. So you can use fishing air hose that goes to like your fish tanks or you can use any type of air hose for this technique. I'm gonna show you that I learned a while back and you can create several different things uh, using this technique. And I'm just gonna play around at first to show you some of the things that you can create. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that I have a nice even cut on one of the ends of the hose. So I'm just gonna trim that off to make sure that it's more even. I never get even cuts, so it doesn't matter how hard I try. Okay, so we have pretty even cut for the most part, and I'm gonna use my hot glue guns for this. So I have uh, three types of hot glue guns. Uh, the first one is the one I use the most, so it's pretty dirty. I'm not sure if it's gonna leave any marks on the tube or if it's gonna kind of burn the tube so i have pulled out two of the other guns that i have that are little mini ones and i don't really use these ones too often this one has a silicone burn guard on it so i'm curious to see if that one's gonna work and then this is the one i used last time when i did this technique and it worked out really well uh, you can see how dirty this one is, but I'm still gonna try to use it, we'll see. The first thing you wanna do is remove your glue. You don't want any glue in your guns. Okay, and if your glue gun gets too hot, it's very easy to melt the tube and break it off. It won't melt and stick to your glue gun. You can easily pull it off, but it'll melt off from the tube and it'll break. So you just wanna kind of just press your tube onto the nozzle and keep pushing gently towards the end of your nozzle. You wanna keep it moving because if you let it sit too long, uh, it's gonna get too hot and break off. So you just kinda wanna push it gently and then pull it out and it reshapes the tube. I'm gonna show you a few different things. Uh, you can make glasses you can make different shaped bottles. You can make condiment bottles. I've made ketchup bottles this way. You can make decorative uh, jars. I made an oil and vinegar jar. And the more you play around with this, the more you're gonna learn. I've learned to manipulate the shape of the tube after it's nice and warm. So I'm just gently pushing it. I'm kind of letting it go on its own. I'm just kind of guiding it and putting a little pressure on it as I'm pushing it to the end. I like using this one. It's cleaner, it's smaller. It doesn't get as hot as my bigger gun and it works out, but you can always turn your gun on and off to cool it down a little if it gets too hot. This one will make a nice glass. So I'm gonna cut that off and I'll show you how to seal that up. When you're snipping your tube, you just want to try and cut as straight as you can to get a nice even cut. And then you just take a little bit of your hot glue and you just fill in that bottom. 
just to close it off. And then you can stick it down to your mat. I like to stick it on my mat. You can stick it on something silicone. Uh, you can use wax paper, but sometimes the glue is so hot it will still stick to the wax paper when you go to peel it off. So I just stick it on my mat or something silicone. Okay, so I'm going to try this one with the silicone guard in case you might have a guard like this on your glue gun. Now I can remove this guard off, but I wanted to see if it still worked. And it does. It does get pretty hot though. I had to cool this one down. The tube was moving a lot slower um, as I was pushing it inward uh, because of the guard and that heated up the tube and it began to melt. It created this ripple design in the tube and it kind of looked like a flexi bendy straw but it was super fun. This is something that you can play around with and get kind of creative. Um, you can totally manipulate the hose with the gun and the heat. Okay, so getting down to business, I spent a lot of time trying different things to uh, manipulate the shape that I was trying to achieve. And I came up with this bead. Uh, it's painted yellow, so it left a little staining on the inside of the tube, but that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna use this gun. I've removed the guard off of it and I'm gonna show you, I've already created the pieces that I need and I'm just showing you how I got there. So I slowly pushed the tube inward to the very end and I didn't force it. I just let it go on its own and just kind of added a little pressure and guided it. You kinda of wanna try and keep the tube straight or it will shape a little off, offset. Once I reached the end, I pulled it out slowly. I thought this one was gonna tear, but it did not. And then I quickly inserted the bead in there. The tube is still warm and you can totally touch it without burning yourself. And then I just pushed the tube in and kind of tightened it around the bead. When the tubes dry, they dry harder than they are as regular tubes. The heat will change the i don't know what's in the molecules or but it changes it and they become like a harder plastic so i'm just trying to get it nice and tight around the bottom so what i did was i decided to go in again with the hot glue gun and just heat up right around the bottom part to try and warm it up some more so that i can get it a little bit tighter and uh, secure on the bead. Try, I'm trying to bring the bottom part inward a little more. So I just heated it up more and I kept working it um, until it was a little closer to the bead. And then I just used my needle nose pliers to pull out the bead and now I'm just going to snip it off from the tube and I'm just lightly giving the ends a trim to even them out a little more. You can also make milk bottles this way and it's just a really fun technique and it's like the more you work with it the more creative you get and the more things you want to try out and it's just kind of fun to manipulate this tube to different shapes. I'm still trying to get my ends to curve down a little more. I'm trying to get them to be a little more rounded. So I'm just going back into the nozzle and heating that up. And then I'm going to try and shape it to curve a little more at the end. You can leave your top part straight if you like, or you can give it a little more added design and just flare out the rim by just putting it on the very end of the nozzle and twisting it a few times. That'll heat it up and flare your rim out. And I'm just gonna tap it down just to flatten it out so it's nice and even. And that just gives a little added design to the top of the flute. 
So I have these other two pieces that I created and I have these metal pieces and I'm just going to use these metal pieces for the bases for the glass tops to sit on and they just fit perfectly right in there. So now that I've got my tops created, it's time to create the rest of the light fixtures. This is absolutely one of my favorite ways to create, pulling out all my metal pieces and hardware. And I found these pieces in a thrift haul and I really don't know what they are. There were two different styles. I found a batch of them and I've been using them for everything. I've used these for so many things in my different projects, but today, I'm going to use them for the fixtures and I'm going to use the one that has prongs on it. So I just bent it a little bit so that the screw part is facing upward. This knob on the screw part actually comes off. I've used those for different knobs and handles on my projects. So right now I'm just straightening it out and I'm going to take that knob off. It just unscrews. They kind of look like earring backs, but honestly, I don't really know what they are used for. I just know that they're super handy for my projects <laughs> and they're easy to cut apart. Okay. I got that off and I found two scrap pieces of my metal shapes, my little tubes here that were the same size. So I'm going to use those and I'm going to use some bead caps. I received these bead caps from Shira at Queen City Minis and I finally get to use them on something. So I'm going to use them for this. These will sit on the bottom of the light base. It'll give it a little bit of a design. I don't want to go too fancy on these because this is an old farmhouse and there's nothing really that fancy about it. So I'm just going to make some basic ones, but this will help give it some sort of design. So I'm just going to uh, screw these in. I've applied some of the Loctite super glue and just push these all the way down to the very bottom of the screw. And it'll sit on there like that. Okay. I'm going to screw the top knot back on and create the burner. So the knob's on and I'm going to use the Loctite super glue to put a little drop right in the center. And I'm going to use uh, these jewelry clasps that I found in a haul. Uh, they have two ends. One end has a screw to it and the other one doesn't and they just screw together. So I'm just using the end with the screw on it. It kind of looked like a burner part. So I'm just going to use that and this is what it looks like. Okay, moving on to the rod that will be the gas pipe. I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and just bend the tip of it at a 90 degree angle and create an L shape. I'll be able to connect it up underneath the prongs like so. I'm just going to take my other one that I created and use it as a guide for length. And I'm going to take the bottom end and I'm going to bend it in another 90 degree angle facing the opposite direction. And then that part will be attached to the wall. Once I get it adjusted, I'm going to clip off the excess. The ends usually get pinched close, so I'm just going to file that to open it up back to a round shape. I'm going to apply some super glue and just use a couple bead spacers to create a bracket that will attach to the wall. And I really struggled with trying to get this little piece on. I don't know why, but I finally got it to work out with the tweezers. Now 
Now that I got this part secured into place, this is what it looks like. And now it's time to attach these two pieces together. Okay, for the gas pipe, I'm gonna apply some of the super glue right where the brackets are. And this is where I learned that the brackets actually bend super easy and kind of tighten up to grip onto whatever it is that it's attaching to. So what I did was put the pipe on and it didn't want to stick right away. So I struggled a little with trying to keep this into place, but um, this is where I decided, okay, I'm gonna bend those brackets and see if that'll help. And all I did was take my needle nose pliers and began to bend those brackets right around the pipe. And then it just got tighter and really secure until it just stopped moving and it was nice and snug. So again, I really don't know what these are used for, but man, that is super handy. And it kind of looks pretty cool like that. I really had no idea that these prongs had a purpose. I think I chose the one with the prongs because there was like a flat base that I knew I could attach the pipe to. And then I just discovered that they just grip down and I can bend them to hold the pipe into place. So it really worked out. Okay, this is where I'm at and this is what they're beginning to look like. And I think they look super neat. Thank you so much one fine piece of glass for this suggestion because I would have never thought to create these without your idea. Now I'm just going to dry fit the top on just to get a better visual of what they're going to look like. And there it is. I just think these look super neat. I really love them. But they need one more part before I can paint them. So I have to create some sort of handle to control the gas. And I'm going to use these tiny little handles that I purchased from Timu. And I'm just going to play around and try and figure out where they're going to go, what's going to look best. And I struggled with this as well. I just kept dropping it and I could not get a good visual without the tweezers so if I were to hold them in my fingers I wasn't getting a good visual but I did come up with a great place for these handles there is a gap and a flat space right in between two of the prongs and the handle just fits perfectly in there so that is where it's going to go I'm going to use my super glue and it was almost as if that's where it was meant to be so it was a perfect fit and that's where it needs to be it was meant to sit there <laughs> so i've attached the little handles in place you can see as i'm attaching the second handle how it just fits perfectly right in that space sometimes pieces and parts will just fall right into place where they're meant to be and sometimes your piece will just help create itself <laughs> so now that i've got these two pieces completed it's time to paint them and of course for metal pieces i'm going to start with the black base coat and i'm using my chalk paint uh, i really have gotten uh used to using my chalk paint this bottle has been sitting around for a long long time and i'm finding a lot of use painting all these metal parts with it so i decided to paint these pieces separately before attaching them on i just for some reason thought it would be easier to do so uh, because i can pick it up and get in the grooves now i'm stamping on my metallic antique copper and I'm just going to breeze through this pretty quickly because I've showed this technique several times. And I am doing both pieces, but I'm not going to do the burner part with the copper. I'm going to use my chrome paint marker to add a little silver to the burner part. And I'm still stamping it on. 
And finally, I'm going to add a little bit of that antique gold rub and buff in sporadic areas around this whole thing. And I am really trying to train myself to use a very little bit of this stuff at a time because I, in my mind, I technically just want hints of it, but I'm so heavy handed and I'm still kind of new at using the rub and buff, but I'm just using a Q-tip to apply it or a cotton swab. And uh, I think the more I use this, the better I'm going to get at it. But here are the final pieces all painted. And now I just need to glue the base onto the top for the glass piece. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of super glue right onto the bead cap. The bead cap has uh, points around the top part of it and I'm just applying the glue to those points. I'm also going to glue the tops on in place so I'm just adding a little bit of the glue around the bottom of the rim. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but one of the tops had a small piece of either broken tube or hot glue in it, and I managed to pull that out with a pair of tweezers. And this is what they look like. I absolutely love these. They are so neat. I just love these so much. So I'm going to install them and show you what they look like. Okay, I've put all the lights into place. I had to put like a little shim on the bottom of this one so I just use leftover pieces from the wall and somebody was concerned about the door opening and hitting it so I made sure that the door cleared it and this is what they look like. I hope you all have enjoyed this video today and you find it quite inspiring to try and create some of your own light fixtures. I think that they are super unique. I think they're very fitting for the farmhouse. So if you have enjoyed this video today, tiny friends, please don't forget to click that like button and give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought about these fixtures in the comments below. Once again, thank you to everybody that has subscribed to my channel and welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support. I love being here. <laughs> I just love it. So when I come back, I'll be aging the walls and I think I'm going to add some curtains to that window. There's a lot of glue on the uh, frame that I can see and I want to hide that. So I think it needs a set of curtains as well. So until next time, tiny friends, you all have a lovely day and I will see you all on the mini side. Bye-bye.